Hello and welcome to Thank You Thursday. Today we are talking about Mary Prince, born 1788, death unknown. Mary Prince was a slavery abolitionist and author that helped uncover the atrocities of the transatlantic slave trade through her autobiographical writing. In 1788, Mary Prince was born into slavery in Brackish Pond, Bermuda, now known as Devonshire Parish. Her father was a sawyer, owned by a slave owner named David Tringham, and her mother was a house servant, owned by another slave master, Charles Miners. She was one of six siblings. Charles Miners died in 1788, and Mary was sold, along with her mother and her siblings, to Captain Darrell Williams as house servants. Mary and her mother were given to his daughter, and Mary became her granddaughter, Betsy Williams' servant and companion. Captain Darrell's wife, Sarah Williams, died in 1798. He went on to marry another woman two years later. He raised money for the wedding by selling Mary to Captain John Ingham for 38 British pounds, separating Mary from her family at age 12. Her sisters were also separated and sold to different slave owners. The Inghams were short-tempered and cruel, regularly flogging their slaves for minor reasons. Mary gained a friend in a fellow slave named Hedy, who she witnessed get beat to death while she was pregnant by the Inghams. Mary attempted to run away and seek out her mother, who along with other slaves, tried to hide Mary in a cave. Upon returning to the Ingham plantation, the Inghams decided to sell Mary to another slave owner named Mr. D on the Turks and Caicos Islands in 1806. Mr. D was in the business of salt and owned salt ponds that were worked by his slaves. The production of salt was labour intensive and dangerous. Slaves were made to stand in salt water for long periods of time. This would corrode and lose the legs of men who were forced to work in these waters for most of the day. Mary and the female slaves would package the salt. Many slaves would become ill and died from the poor working conditions, with Mary herself developing rheumatism. Mr. D got out of the salt business and returned to Bermuda. He would physically abuse Mary and his own daughter by giving them regular beatings and forcing Mary to bathe him. Mr. D would send Mary to Cedar Hill to wash clothes. The money Mary would make was collected by Mr. D. Eventually, in 1815, Mary was sold to John Adams Wood of Antigua for $300. She was a domestic slave within his household. Mary's rheumatism would sometimes mean she was unable to work. When Adams was off traveling, Mary would take the opportunity to sell her domestic services and coffees to ships. She also joined the Moravian church where she was able to take classes and learn how to read. She kept this away from Adams for fear of his disapproval. In December 1826, Mary married Daniel James, a former slave who brought his freedom with the money he earned from being a carpenter and a cooper. This made Adams abuse Mary because she feared that Daniel being a freed man would inspire Mary to run away. This meant that Mary's floggings increased. In 1828, Adams Wood and his family travelled to England to bring their daughters back to the Caribbean and arrange their son's education in London. They brought Mary with them to have a servant with them on their travels. Due to the Somerset vs Stewart case in 1772, it was illegal to transport slaves out of England. This meant Mary was free. Even though Mary was free, Adams would retain the rights to her. Due to conflicts between them, Wood gave her a letter that gave her the right to leave, but also the letter suggested that nobody would hire her. This was done to make it hard for Mary to move on. After finally leaving the Wood household with help from the Moravian church, Mary took shelter there. She found occasional work with Thomas Pringle after a few weeks. Thomas Pringle was a writer and slavery abolitionist. Mary would join the Anti-Slavery Society as their secretary. Mary still had complications with her freedom as John Adam Wood wouldn't give up his rights to her. As long as slavery was legal in Antigua, Mary would not be able to return to Antigua to her husband unless she was re-enslaved. John Pringle helped her petition this to Parliament, but they were not successful. Mary started working for Pringle in 1829, in his own household. Mary was encouraged by Pringle to have her life story transcribed by Susanna Strickland. Pringle was the editor and the book was published in 1831. The book was named The History of Mary Prince and was the first publication that detailed the life of an enslaved black woman. The book brought great controversy, as it was the first book describing a black woman's life. 
In the midst of a growing anti-slavery movement, the book sold out three different printings. Whether she returned back to Antigua to her husband is unknown as there is not much recorded about her life after the book. Her book played an important part in the debate over abolishing slavery in the Caribbean colonies. It also upset those participating in the slave trade as it exposed their cruelty and treatment towards slaves. Many human rights cases evolved from this book and its honest view on the conditions slaves had to endure. In her own words, Mary Prince wrote, I have been a slave myself. I know what slaves feel. I can tell by myself what other slaves feel and by what they have told me. The man that says slaves are quite happy in slavery, that they don't want to be free, that man is either ignorant or a lying person. I never heard a slave say so. Mary Prince. I would like to say thank you to Mary Prince. You definitely made the world a better place. Peace.